It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the weekly poll. Oh my. All right, it's time for the weekly poll. Jay, this is, the part, this is the time of the week. You do this once a week. You give us your top recommendations in, in, the, in the comic mm-hmm. book industry for that specific yes. week. How many comics do you have for us today, Jay? This week seemed like a pretty good week for jumping on, and um, there's a lot. So I have five um, suggested comics. So um, number one is um, actually Batman number seven and Nightwing number five. Number I'm five. mentioning this because um, this comic, because um, this is the first um, crossover for DC Rebirth. So this series is called um, Night of the Monster Men. Um, part one of the story arc is Batman number seven, and part two is Nightwing number five. I think okay. this is a good jumping on point if you're a fan of the Batman family, and you want a good and you want a number one. So you want to see where it starts. So I think this is a good jumping on point. All right. So the next one is International Iron Man number seven. Spoilers. Um, the story of Iron Man's real parents, because mm-hmm. they revealed that it wasn't. Um, the Starks. Um, the real story of who his parents are and how he was adopted by the Starks is finally revealed here. What? What? Yeah. So, um, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the idea so much, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> what? But they've been they've been teasing this for a few years now. I think it started with um, Kieran Gillen's run on Invincible Iron Man. I think that was volume five. If if you've been if you're an Iron Man fan and you really want to know what they've been talking about for these past few years, you should uh-huh. check this issue out. Oh it, really? It, it supposedly just reveals everything. All right. So the next one is Seven to Eternity um, from Image Comics. This story is made by Rick Remender and Jerome Pena, who I personally know from their great runs uh, on on Canny X Force. And okay. Fear Agent, which which you guys should check out if you guys have the shot, okay. uh, get, have the chance. Um, but this issue is, I think it's a good step towards world building, because what Ooh, they do here okay. is they, they try to establish this whole place. This it it it's a it, it feels like it's high fantasy, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's a bit of a, like a west like a spaghetti western kind of thing going on. For me, like that's what I see. At the same time, it feels like the images would belong in Barsoom from like John Carter of Mars. So um, yeah, uh, Opeña and Remender have said that they've been working on this idea for a long time, and maybe you know those two have quality work. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is issue one of a new series that they're making. It might be worth the follow. That's what I'm saying. So All far, right. I think it. it, it I think. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of potential. So people might want to check this out. All right, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is Raven number one, and Raven number one is um, being made by Marv Wolfman and Alison Borges. I hope I got the name right. Okay. Pronunciation right. Um, so in this mini series, Raven um, moves in with an estranged aunt, and she moves to high school. Okay, so um, for me, I- I'm a Teen Titans fan. Before, mm-hmm. like not not the weird reason to be Teen Titans, um, but and-, and this idea of Raven going to high school was already done in the pre Flashpoint Teen Titans. So I I'm, okay. I-, I wasn't excited about it so much. But then I saw that Marv Wolfman was the one doing the writing duties for this comic. For this one, yeah, Marv Wolfman is the guy who actually wrote New Teen Titans where Raven, Cyborg, and I think Starfire had their first appearance. So he actually created oh. Raven. Whoa! Yeah, Throwback. and that's why I want to see what he does with the character. Sorry. So I think that's that's one reason why people should check this out. Okay, cool, cool. Just cool, to see cool. what he does with the Raven again. <laughs> last, <laughs> last one is um, <laughs> Trinity number one. And this is not a story about the lead girl from The Matrix. This oh, is a story man. about... I was really this looking forward to that you... Trinity comic book, <laughs> where they where they go 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 down the rabbit hole with her. Yeah. So this story is, you know, as as you see on the image, it's a story on DC's big three of Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. The, the best thing about this for me is that 
Francis Manapol is dro- doing the art. Okay. He is best known for his work on The Flash mm-hmm. and um, on his work on Detective Comics. The thing about this is that, the great thing about this is that unlike other comics featuring the big three, mm-hmm. um, it's usually based on the relationship between Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. But you have to remember that right before Rebirth, the new 52 Superman died. So the Superman in comics now is from the pre-Flashpoint universe. So the, the thing I'm looking forward to um, the most when it comes to this comic is how pre-Flashpoint Superman is going to build a relationship with, with new Batman and Wonder Woman. So okay. I think that's going to be hella juicy. Oh, ooh, oh my. Oh my. Right? All right. And, and I think just because of that, it's worth checking out. And if you're a fan of the, the three, you might as well grab issue number one. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. Mm-hmm. It's time for your honorable mentions. <clears throat> All right. So honorable mentions for, for this week. All right. So this is Vision number 11. I've never been a fan of Vision until this series came out. Like, it's being written by Tom King, and it is absolutely fantastic. I personally think that it's one of the best Marvel comics out right now. So, um, next one is Aliens Life and Death number one. Um, I'm not so familiar with the franchise. I love the movies, though. Um, uh-huh. But I am suggesting this because Dan Abnett is writing it. Most of us know Dan Abnett from his run on Guardians of the Galaxy. The one the movie is based on, he made that. So I'm personally excited for what Dan Abnett can do with Xenomorphs and Colonial Marines. Next one is um, <clears throat> um, IDW's um, Revolution number one. If, if you want to see how these characters come together, it's it's worth checking out. Issue number one. Sweet. Revolution. All right. Last one. Last one. Of your and last mentions. one. Last one is Wicked and Divine 1831. It's a one shot. I think this is good because you actually get a whole issue just to check out like a past pantheon. And it should be fun. All right, sweet. All right, thanks so yeah. much, Jay. It's been the weekly poll with Jay Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, let's give you a little uh, an outro kind of a thing. Let's see, what, what can we play? Oh, here we go. <coughs> All right, thanks, Jay. Moves into high school, where she meets Eddie and uh, and Chelsea. Right, that's that's the one. Eddie and Chelsea. That's so rain. Oh man, I'm ruining I'm, I'm ruining the segment for you. All right, go ah. on. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna edit um, that out. I'm gonna edit that out in post. <laughs> Funny how you bring up John yeah. Carter and the fact that it, that this feels like a spaghetti western because John Carter kind of came from that era, like uh, before yeah. he got yanked into Mars. Yeah, it's it's a bit of like what if he was on Earth, but in Mars. <laughs> but, what? <laughs> the weekly poll, people. The weekly poll. <laughs> <laughs>